In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the Pure Maths Paper 3, specifically Paper 3.2 from Cambridge A-Level exams from 2023. I'll be doing all this on the board. Hopefully, it'll be a lot like you're used to your teacher doing in a classroom. If you want other questions from this paper, you should be able to find it in a playlist in the description below. And if you find any of my videos uh, useful, I'd greatly appreciate liking, subscribing, or even sharing it to a friend sitting the exams this year or next. In question eight, we are given this differential equation and asked to solve it. Now, this is a quite a difficult question. We're given seven marks um, as a reward of doing it. Um, but it is a question that comes up quite regularly and the method to solve it is quite um, is familiar. It's the same every time. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to play around with this. Okay, what we want to do here is get all the y's over uh, with the dy here. That's, at least that's how I think of it. Um, so let's see, let's move the y's over this side and we would get 1 over for, when I say the y's, I'm talking about the expression with y in it. Basically, this guy here. And then uh, dy dx. And that leaves on the other side 1 over, well, let's just change this to e to the minus uh, 2x minus 1. Remember, we change the power to a minus, it just goes up the bracket. So I didn't really move this, I just wrote it slightly different. Now, at this point, uh, some people just move the dx up here. That's fine. Um, it's, it's technically not quite right, but it's, it works. I, that's mostly how I do it. What we're really doing at this point is we're going to be, as we always are in maths, we're going to be equal. We're going to be um, balanced. We're going to do the same thing to the left side and the same thing to the right side. We're going to integrate the left side with respect to dx. And I'm going to integrate the right side with respect to dx. Now, what happens here, the dx is cancelled. Again, that's not technically, I, I don't remember enough about uh, calculus, but I seem to remember that's not technically what happens, but it works out fine for what we're doing here. So really, on the left, we're left with the integral with respect to y. On the right, we're integrating with respect to x. That's why we went and got the, the term with y's in it over here. I knew this was going to happen. And you should know it's going to happen as well because you're going to end up doing, in practice, 10 or 20 of these questions because it will come up in the exam. And I knew the x's would uh, be over on the right here. So we're just left with two integrations here. And um, so that's a couple of marks for that. Uh, I'd say one mark for doing this. Um, what's next is, is probably a mark for each of these. These are hard questions. Integrating this is quite difficult. Integrating this, uh, not so much, but still um, fairly difficult. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and do the left-hand side first. I can't do this. Uh, like, I have to look up how to do this. Um, in fact, there's books like this tick on certain integrations and how they work out. Um, but in the exam, they give us the most common ones. I'll put them up on the board here. Uh, the page on integration. So down the bottom, there's a, a few of the more common strange ones. And one of them looks a little like this. Let me write up the one I'm going to use. Uh, 1 over x squared plus a squared um, is equal to 1 over a, the inverse tan of x over a. Now, I could look up how to do that and prove it, I guess, but I, I've never bothered because there's thousands of um, equations like this in some of the books. The most common ones are the ones given here. And you need to recognize that this is quite similar to this. It's not exactly the same. You're gonna to have to play it around with it a bit. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll do this two different ways. Uh, you know what, let's do it over here and that way we can just fill it in over here. Um, so let's do this integral again. Um, two different ways. Uh, the most, the easiest way, I think, it, it'll work out a little longer, but it's the easiest to step through, is let's just get it to look like this. What we want here is x squared. And remember, this is the integral with respect to x. So in this case, we're talking about y's. We want x squared plus something squared. Let's rewrite this as that. Uh, one over, um, instead of y, 
9 y squared. I want just y 9 squared. <laughs> Sorry, let me start Instead of 9 y squared, I want just y squared. But there's a 9 there. We're going to have to deal with that 9. Plus uh, a 4, which could be 2 squared. I need to get rid of this 9. Um, so what I'll do is I'll divide by 9. If I divide this by 9, I better divide this by 9. And I better divide that by 9. But now I'm left with, um, and with, this is the integral, dy, that's equal to, let's see, 1 over 9 has no y's in it. It's multiplying everything. It can move all the way out front. On the bottom then, we're left with 1 over y squared plus, uh, let's say, yeah, let's say 2 squared over 3 squared. Or sorry, let's say 2 over 3 squared. Now it looks just like this. We have um, the, the variable we're dealing with, x squared, in this case y squared. We have something squared, 2 over 3 squared. And I know all of this is equal to 1 over 9 is out front. We'll deal with that later. Um, is equal to 1 over, my a and 9 looks alike. <laughs> 1 over a. In this case, a is 2 over 3. 1 over 2 over 3 is uh, 3 over 2. Um, multiplied by tangent, the inverse tangent of x divided, x in this case is y, divided by 2 over 3. Dividing by 2 over 3 is, is 3 over 2. Uh, let's see, the 3 cancels into the 9, 3 times, 3 times 2 is 6. The answer to this is 1 over 6, uh, inverse tangent of 3y over x. You'll lose a mark for this. You've got to remember a plus a constant. Let's say, we're going to have another constant, so let's put constant 1 there. Okay, I'm not sure how many marks you would have got for that. I think you deserve probably two, but you, you might have only got one, unfortunately. We still need to do the right side of this equation here. Now, this side's a bit easier. Uh, the integral of e and the derivative of e, they're quite easy because that's where e comes from. It's a number that uh, we purposely use because it differentiates easily. It integrates quite easily. The integral of e is just e, just leave it alone, e to the 2x minus 1. And then we differentiate this, whatever's up here, and divide by it. So the derivative of all this is minus 2. So divide by minus 2 is 1 over minus 2, or, or minus a half. Uh, oh, sorry, plus some constant, plus C2. So we have an equation here. We have y's and x's. So we're well on our way to solving this. Remember, they wanted an expression for y in terms of x. We just need to rearrange all this to get y equals. Except we need to deal with these constants. Uh, one thing we can do is we can take this over and go minus C1. Um, another thing we can do is just go, let's just say C. A constant minus a constant is still a constant. Uh, often you see in, in a book the constants just disappear a little. That's, that's what they're doing. Like two constants, it's just some other constant. I sometimes call this C3, or, or in this case I'll just call it C. Okay, how do we find what C is? Well, luckily in the question they, um, they told us uh, when y equals 0, x equals, uh, x equals 1. And here's an equation with x and y. So we can just put these in there and all we'll be left with is C. So now let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, 1 over 6 uh, inverse tangent of 3 times 0 divided by 1 is just 0 um, is equal to minus 1 over 2 e minus uh, 2 times 1 is 2 and minus 2 minus another 1 is minus 3 and plus C. Uh, the inverse tangent of 0 is 0, so that's gone. And uh, we are left with, rearrange this, to so get c is equal 1 over 2 e to the minus 3. You can put that in a calculator, it's just a number, but they, they specifically, oh, I thought that, yeah, somewhere they say specifically, um, maybe it's part b, uh, they want the exact number, and we should leave the exact number. Don't, don't change this into a number. Just leave it like that, that's fine. Uh, you, could, you could write it if you want 1 over 2 e to the power of 3, I guess, but either of those is okay. So now uh, let's, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's rub this out. 
and put it in there we get plus one over sorry I, I, I'll put that first way uh, yeah one over two e to the minus three okay uh, now we just need to rearrange this so y is on its own it's actually not that difficult uh, let's see there's no y's over here let's move the six over first and we will get uh, can we take anything out of it yeah let's move the six over multiply this by six we'll write this one first because it's positive multiply this by six we get um, equals three e to the minus three that's just this multiplied by six minus this multiplied by six is three e to the minus two x minus one and all that equals inverse tan of three y over over x. Oh, I'm sorry. We do have. Oh no, that's that's not right. Uh, that should be a two. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologise for anybody who's been screaming at the board that there was a an x there the whole time. And um, that should have been a two. Yeah, uh, the inverse uh, tan. Uh, we can get rid of tan. Just tan both sides. Tan the left. That destroys that. Uh, tan goes into the right like that um, and we're left with 3y over 2 so if we just multiply 2 across divide 3 across y will be equal to 2 over 3 tan 3 to the power of uh, 3 multiplied by e to the power of minus 3 minus 3 e to the minus 2x minus 1 and that's the answer to part a now it was a long question it was uh, 7 marks for it let me just step through quickly what we did there again. We started with dy dx is equal to this. This is very common, it comes up all the time where we need to go back from this. We started with differentiation, we needed to get back to y equals. That's integrate. We needed to integrate. We should have known, ah, integration is here somewhere. Then we can't just integrate this aside. It's, we don't know how to integrate y's and x's in a big complex question like this. Thankfully, they're separated, so we could separate them each, each side, and we could end up integrating with respect to y and integrate with respect to x. It's, a, it's, it's actually sort of a simplified question in calculus, so it just works out that nicely. And it will always work out in the exam for you like that. And they'll only give you a question that could be done like this. And once we've done this, we just concentrate on integrating the left and then concentrate on integrating the right. Here's the good news, if, if you make a mistake somewhere here and you continue on, they, they should give you all the rest of the marks. They'll take the marks away from for the mistake. They should give you the rest. So hopefully you integrate this and you've got this answer here. But again, if you got something slightly wrong, if you did the rest correctly, you're fine. You integrate the right, you get this answer here. Next thing that was important was to remember the constants. And, and certainly to combine them to be one constant um, and, and solve that constant, where have I done that? Up here. Solve that constant, that was an important marker too. Put that back in. And then lastly, we just solved this equation with respect to y. Okay, I hope uh, that answered everything there. I know there's a part B, but if you have any questions from part A, please put them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Okay, for part B, which is only for one mark, so I probably didn't need this much space uh, because they're not gonna give you a, you're not gonna need much space to get one mark. They, they, say, they say state what happens to the value of Y um, as X tends to infinity and give your answer in an exact form. So basically what happens to Y if X goes to infinity? So let's deal with this. There's no X, no X, no X. There's only X here. All I really need to deal with is uh, this term here, e to the minus 2x minus 1. Um, so I'd, I'd, I'd write something like this. As x goes to infinity, I would say minus 2x minus 1 goes off to, think of what happens this, goes off to minus infinity. Um, like the minus 1 won't matter. The 2 doesn't even matter. 2 times infinity is still infinity minus infinity that's like you don't have to write all this by the way this is just i like to step through it all so i like to think that goes off to minus infinity and then as that goes to minus infinity uh, e to the minus well let's let's even just write it e to the minus infinity what happens that 
Um, so think about that. That equals 1 over e to the infinity. Remember, e is just a number. It's like 2.7, I think. Um, what 2.7 to the power of infinity. Well, that just goes off to 1 over infinity. That just goes off to 0. 1 divided by bigger and bigger numbers go off to 0. So um, that th that's a... Uh, uh, minus 3e to the minus 2x minus 1 and um, this goes off to 0 3 times 0 is 0 minus 0 is 0 this goes off to 0 so y y goes off to let's see 2 divided by 3 doesn't change uh, sorry, 2 divided by 3 doesn't change tan isn't affected um, 3 to the e minus 3 isn't affected. We just get minus 0 here. Minus 0. That, that's the answer. And you don't have to write in the minus 0, obviously. In fact, I probably wouldn't write in the minus 0. That's the answer. As x approaches infinity, y approaches this. Again, you don't actually need to do all of these steps. Um, you certainly need to do it in your head. Uh, but you don't need really to write all of them out. If you get it correctly, just write this. But I, I just find it helpful to, because very often as you go through it, people end up mixing up minuses. Like they end up um, missing this minus here maybe, and then you end up with a minus infinity and they get, they get a bit confused. Okay, I hope uh, that answered everything. As I already said, questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.